So, hi, fellow astronomers. Uh, here we are with our second webinar. Uh, let the people join. We'll start as it's uh, seven already, at least in my clock here. Um, so, yeah, and uh, really from the bottom of my, of my heart, I show my gratitude towards our today's guest, Archit Gokhale. Uh, hi, Archit. Hello, Archit, are you there? Yeah. Uh, hi, Rohan. Great. Uh, so, Archit, uh, you may start sharing your screen. Okay, fine. And then uh, I'll speak the further dialogues. Okay, anyways. So, uh, audience, I must say that uh, that today's event, um, I must say that today's event is going to be amazingly enjoyable and tremendously informative. Today we have astro uh, astrophotography on our site and um, even I am really excited to, uh, to know about it because um, though I do astronomy and astrophysics, astrophotography seems uh, a little bit or maybe very much different to me. Uh, so, so let's see what uh, what Archit has uh, on his side to uh, to tell us. And also, I would like to let you know that Archit is um, is one of the most important members of uh, Akash Mitra Mandal, who uh, which has uh, like which is an old astronomy club like of twentieth uh, century. Um, he is an amateur astronomer, and as you can see, he is also a, a, an astrophotographer and a TEDx speaker. So, um, so I just wanted to let you know that you are in uh, in a good hands. So, Archit, you may uh, further give your background, your you know your past and your future aims before we start. I am a member of Akash Mitra Manda Kalyan, as Rohan said. I have been giving lectures on astronomy at various institutes like Maharashtra Seva Sangha, uh, Rotary Club. And lot more. I was also given, I, I also had an opportunity to speak on astronomy in the world famous platform, which is TEDx. Um, I write articles on astronomy in Maharashtra Times, Z Disha, Kagol Vishwa, and other such magazines. And I pursue astrophotography. By profession, I'm not into this. Uh, I'm pursuing chartered accountancy, but uh, uh, I'm pursuing astronomy as my hobby. So, looking forward to interact with you today. Yeah, and like that is uh, really great that. Um, uh, you're on mute, Rohan. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, <laughs> my bad. I'm really just uh, so excited to know about this um, a bit new field. But yeah, it, it is really great to see that uh, that you're pursuing your your passion. Uh, like you know, besides your job and you know. Um, whatever stuff you're doing, uh, it really becomes hard sometimes. But yeah, I really appreciate, I saw your work, your portfolio, and um, and I'm really impressed, I must say that. So it was really pleasing, and um, and we are really eager to uh, to know more from you. Uh, and yeah, so uh, let's start up with our first question. So Ajit, tell us what is astrophotography, and, uh, and just give us a brief description about that, whatever you have. Is my screen visible to you? Yeah, yeah. So basically, astrophotography is nothing but uh, photographing the astronomical objects, various celestial events, and the areas of night sky. So basically, uh, there are multiple events, like there, is, there was a great conjunction in 2020, or there is a position of the planets, or there is an eclipse. So photographing all those celestial events or celestial objects is the basic of astrophotography. Uh, you may proceed with the next question, Rohan. Okay, so, um, yeah, so like, after knowing astrophotography... You are on mute. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so after pursuing this, uh, like, you know, knowing what about that particular thing, of course, human will have, you know, that tendency to know why. So, I would like to ask you that why we should uh, love or pursue astrophotography. Okay, so basically, uh, there are multiple interesting events which occur in the sky just like i told that uh, there is an eclipse or sometimes uh, occultations takes place like uh, an asteroid passes in front of the star and the star gets occulted or for that matter say gets eclipsed by that asteroid so recording or photographing or videographing such observations also helps in uh, doing further research such as you can get the 
details of the asteroids what is its size what it where is what is its origin or recently you might have heard the atmosphere of the pluto has been uh, discovered by the various scientists so we had a small role in that we ob observe and photograph the occultation of the of a star by the pluto so it astrophotography also helps in certain uh, further studies into astronomy also you can take, you can plate solve your images you can uh, do the photometry means you can measure the angular distances between the twin stars and so on so there are multiple uses of course uh, with the that uh, the photography or astrophotography is a great experience and along with that it has multiple uses or further implications in astronomy wow like it's the uh, it's that art hidden in this uh, hidden in this huge mathematical field called astronomy so that yeah. that's really interesting okay so um, for the next question i have uh, that now like we know that uh, i'm not saying we like as far as i am concerned about uh, or i know about this astrophotography does not need any college degree uh, for sure but still what are some topics one need to study uh, and uh, and should know about uh, before you know going into this right so basically uh, of course as you said you don't need a college degree or a specific degree for astrophotography but you should know the certain basics of astronomy like where where to look for that particular object so if you are planning to photograph uh, say some deep sky objects like m42 which is orion nebula so at first you should be able to spot the orion constellation at what time it rises at when at in which direction at what time you will be able to see it and then you need to figure out the orion constellation first then where is the orion nebula in that particular constellation also you need to uh, know the basics of your camera or the softwares which you use like for example uh, i use i generally use canon 700d camera dslr camera for astrophotography so you should know the basics like when the star trails so you know a star trails right the earth rotates and hence you see that the sky is rotating around us so if you take a long exposure then the star appears like a line in your image and it spoils your image so you should know the 500 rule or there are multiple different methods of to know what is the maximum exposure time mm -hmm. before which a star trails so basically you need to know some basics of astronomy to know with whatever to know some basics of the objects which you are capturing along with the details of the camera you use or the telescope you use and the softwares for the processing or stacking of the images okay so um i just wanted to add here uh, guys uh, a little bit that uh, as archit said that you know you should know the rising time uh, the the setting time of certain you know constellations or certain heavenly bodies and also you should know uh, their position their current position in the sky so there have been many softwares nowadays um, in modern time uh, for us to use for example the you know we have a sky safari we have stellarium so uh, so i really recommend you all to just check them out and uh, and also uh, i would also recommend that you should have that um, that skill to find uh, you know those stuff by yourself in the sky you know we uh, we have different instruments like astrolabe uh, then we have uh, that one instrument you know that uh, uh, planisphere yeah planisphere so so you should know about that too and of course then at last we have the softwares for sure so yeah uh, and also yeah and also the next point uh, as you mentioned that you know we need uh, also um, like different telescopes more camera softwares so i would like to ask you that uh, what equipments you will uh, you will suggest you know for the beginners or for the intermediates to use like the telescope and so, so for uh, planetary photography you basically need telescopes okay. but uh, to photograph certain night sky objects like constellations or something like that you don't specifically need a telescope so you can at the very beginner level you can just start with your mobile phone you just need a tripod and your mobile and some basics of astrophotography and you can photograph some beautiful images okay. but as you go deeper you can have a dslr camera or a small telescope like the basic 4 inch one is sufficient and then there is a lot more which you can upgrade yourself into 
okay and like uh, from the mobile camera we we can just use the the simple uh, inbuilt uh, software okay. yeah yeah you can definitely use the inbuilt software but uh, make sure that uh, there is a manual camera mode in your phone Okay. because the one which we directly click is the auto mode and that doesn't have the required iso or uh, exposure time settings so you should know how to use the manual camera mode in your phone but that is sufficient to know or to start to start with the astrophotography okay wow and like yeah uh, as you said it is definitely true because uh, when you know sometimes we just click in uh, into the sky so uh, the moon disappears <laughs> from the mobile camera so yeah yeah okay so that is because the we generally use the auto mode and that's okay. why uh, either the moon disappears or it appears completely white mm -hmm. so you need to know what the exact iso or exact uh, shutter speed or the exposure time to capture the moon but yes you can definitely do it with the help of your phone itself okay great great uh, audience just a reminder uh, just a reminder if you have any questions you can just put it into the chat box then later you, you may ask Okay, um, so moving on to the next question, uh, you know, like uh, now coming to the technical part a bit, uh, do you need any soft, like, yeah, you need any uh, few softwares for it, of course, but then which are those softwares, you know, which you have in mind? And so I there are a lot of softwares, uh, there is Stellarium, Cartus Ducial, then Star Stax, Lightroom, and various softwares for uh, astrophotography, but which I use are generally uh, there are two categories into it so one is planetary imaging or the solar system objects like all the planets the sun and the moon so basically i use a software called as pip p i p p it's a free software which is available on internet you can just google p i p p pip so you will get a link over the software and you can just download it i use the pip software to stabilize the video so basically planetary uh, you'll just get to know the, all those in detail in our uh, presentation itself but i'm just going uh, i'm just briefing you about it then i use uh, the registax software to stack those images and and the final stacking is also done in auto stacker and they can and then we can go to photoshop or gimp and do the post processing of the image and the second thing which is uh, milky way or deep sky objects like nebulae galaxies clusters for that you basically need deep sky stacker a uh, very famous software to stack all those images and then you can further process it in lightroom photoshop or gimp and i generally use uh, pip auto stacker and registax for the planetary imaging and for deep sky i use uh, deep sky stacker and gimp okay uh and I also uh, saw that you know uh, you have few examples of your uh, work here. So can you just yeah. show us that? So that yes, definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, you can. You may proceed to the question, and then I'll go through the entire flow quickly of the presentation. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's even better. So like this is the last question because uh, now we have made a person an astrophotographer, like intellectually. So uh, what's next? You know, but like a uh, few opportunities. What opportunities uh, they they may have in future? And okay. They... So uh, basically, uh, as I said, that uh, there is uh, uh, the experience of astrophotography is amazing. But along with that, in in the very first question, as I said, that the recording of certain things uh, helps further in astronomy or helps to research more. For for example, as I just told you about the occultations. Or you can also get uh, some interesting facts about the solar corona, that which is the atmosphere of the sun, just by clicking the images of solar eclipse. Or you can, if you observe or click the eclipse, you will get to know that if you have observed, you know what is a diamond ring eclipse, right? It is an annular solar eclipse. So at that time, the moon obstructs the central part of the sun and the the boundary of the sun is visible like a ring so it is referred to as diamond ring eclipse but at some time you will notice that the that particular ring it's broken at some parts you it's clearly visible in your photographs that means the part which is broken that part contains the mountains on the moon okay. so you can go deep into astronomy or research something about the terrain of the moon or terrain of the astro astro asteroid terrain of the star and so on also you can 
write some certain research papers uh, about the position angles about the so there are double stars if you know mm-hmm. or less twin stars or the, there are eclipsing binaries and everything so yeah. one star is at the center and other star is re- revolving around it so you need to know the position angle so one star is here and other star is here then they have an angle between them so you can compute that angle with the help of certain softwares uh, one of uh, which i use or uh, we use is aladdin okay the software name a aladdin a l a d i n all these are free softwares so you can just google and check uh, some details about it so you can do lot of work such as this or you can also re- write papers on occultations by recording the or photographing such important celestial events wow like through astrophotography they are like uh, almost there uh, to become an observational ast- uh, astronomer or maybe a professional astronomer and of course yeah, no I'm doubt sure. you are one yes yes there is a lot of way to deep delve deep into it and you can yeah. definitely become a good uh, professional or not e- say professional but a definitely a good level astronomer with the help of astrophotography great great it, that was amazing so um just a minute yeah so now i would like to end the session but uh, the the questions are over uh, so guys tell archit uh, you know uh, take us through his presentation you may uh, of course put your questions into the chat box here then we will take them into the end so archit you may start with your presentation I'm okay really thank you rohan so uh, just as i said right now that uh, astrophotography is nothing but uh, photography of astronomical objects or the celestial events and the areas of the night sky so it is a very vast topic uh, so whatever we have discussed so far i have tried to incorporate everything in the presentation so to make it simpler i have i forgot the topic into basic three categories so first one as i said is lunar solar comet and planetary photography which is basically the things which are uh, which are a part of our solar system so let us uh, so i'll just uh, help you to know how to click those photographs or I, how i have clicked those photographs along with some examples of the of my images so the second topic will be milky way star trails and the constellation photography so you might have seen a lot about the sagittarius arm or the patch of the milky way in the sky uh, this photo is quite famous or you have also you may have also seen the star trails like the pole star is in the center and all other other stars revolve around it so it is also a quite uh, common practice of photography and the uh, of course constellation photography so orion then are some major such such <clears throat> prominent constellations are also photographed and the third one is deep sky photography which means the photography of uh, deep sky objects like galaxies nebulae star clusters and so on or <clears throat> okay and then i'll just to you to briefly introduce you to the different software and equipment used for astrophotography okay so first is lunar and solar photography we can photograph lunar and solar disk with the help of different equipment so crescent moon is also the best target for astrophotography and the specifically the specifically lunar and solar photography can be done with the help of both the things which is telescope as well as dslr camera so let let just check whatever what on what the setup is dependent so the setup is dependent on the objective behind the taking photographs of the lunar and solar disk so what i mean by that is if you want to get the surface details like lunar disk has different craters on it tycho copernicus are some uh, famous examples so if you want to get the clear or better view of that crater so you need the zoom or more magnification so for that you need a telescope and the other things such as earth shine or eclipses or the crescent phase of the moon along with the beauty of the entire sky like wide angle photography for that you no, don't need the extra magnification you need is the object along with some background or some foreground so for that it can be done with the help of wide angle 
lenses and just DSLR cameras are sufficient for that. Obviously, you need a sturdy tripod. Then transits of ISS. ISS is International Space Station. So at certain times, ISS passes by on the lunar or solar disk. Then transits of planet Mercury and Venus over the solar disk, which is uh, transit is a very famous and uh, interesting phenomenon in astronomy. And all these can be captured with the help of different setups uh, based on the objectives behind it. Yes, uh, as I mentioned in our, our question answer session, various occultations and conjunctions can also be definitely captured. So, yeah, so just it is a tip here uh, to use the proper filter to photograph the sun or anything or any event related to the sun because it may, if but because if not used, it may cause a serious damage to the equipment as well as to your eye. Yeah. So this is the sun disk. I have captured it with the help of Canon 700D and the badder solar filter along with the 250 mm lens. So as you go more into more magnification, so the objective behind this photograph was not about uh, delving deeper into the sunspots or the surface details of the sun. It is the entire disk of the sun. And that's why I don't, I didn't use the telescope. I just used my camera with the proper filter on it and a 250 mm lens. And I got this uh, beautiful disk of the sun. Okay. Means like your, um, your equipments, what, what do you want to use? Uh, depends on your goal too. Like, yes, yeah. definitely. Because, uh, I just, just mentioned in the previous slide, if you want to get that surface surface details, mm -hmm. like there are craters on the moon or sunspots on the sun. So if you want to get the exact view or exact some depth or delve deeper into the uh, details of the craters or the surface details, then of course you need more magnification. Yeah. Especially. And more magnification means the telescope. True. Obviously. So you need telescopes for some sur surface details, but for uh, just taking the disc or the outline of the disc, you don't need any, any detailed magnification. Mm -hmm. So DSLR cameras along with a good lens, like 250 mm, 300 mm is sufficient. So it is definitely dependent on the objective or the goal behind uh, taking your photograph. Similarly, this lunar disk was also captured by me with the same setup because I uh, didn't want to tell deeper. Acha. So th this, so all these uh, moon photographs, the crescent and the half moon photograph. So these photographs are difficult to capture with less, lesser magnification. So for that you need uh, telescopes. So I, I use a uh, Cassegrain telescope. I have a four inch, which is a 90 mm Cassegrain telescope and Canon 700D camera at prime focus. We will definitely see what is prime focus in the next slide. But uh, this slide is just to differentiate between the objectives and the equipment. So in the first two pictures, my objective was to take the entire disc. And for that, uh, I didn't use telescope. But for the next two, uh, or the next two or the crescent and the half moon images, the objective was not taking the entire disc. The objective was taking the details. And you can also see it that in the, in this particular uh, photograph, let me, uh, so in this particular photograph, you can see that the craters are visible in great detail. And, but in this photograph, they are not, if you can just uh, follow my yeah, pointer. True, true. So it is definitely based on the goals. And so, so this, these both photographs are captured using a telescope and a DSLR attached to it. So in this, in the, these photographs, you can also see that, uh, the craters are visible at into more depth or more details are visible in these two photographs. So, or in these, in, in these three photographs, the craters are visible in great depth or all the detailed view is given. Also, I've tried to name those craters. So this is Copernicus, this is Tycho, this is Mare Serenatis, Mare Tranquillatis and everything. So for that, you need definitely need telescope, but it is not sufficient to capture it at uh, prime focus. You need eyepiece as well. 
so eyepiece increases the magnification yeah the basic focal length of the telescope is definitely greater than that of a camera but i when you attach eyepiece to it it definitely gets enhanced okay so you can clearly get the equipments and the goal behind taking those photographs and how it is differentiated based on the goal so in these two photographs it is just camera in these two photographs it is camera and the telescope but at prime focus no eyepiece is involved okay. and in the in the later three photographs if you need uh, some great detailed view then definitely you need <clears throat> eyepiece projection method so i used my same telescope 94 inch cassegrain my canon camera and a 25 mm eyepiece wow. so let's go further so these are certain photographs uh, earth shine so earth shine is nothing but the reflection of the earth's light which gets reflected from the earth to the moon uh, and it gets reflected back to the earth so that is called as earth shine so you can see that the phase was crescent crescent moon the the, the down part you can see that the moon is crescent and this part is dark yeah so it, so it is not visible to the naked eye but when you give a long exposure like you open your shutter for a longer period of time then you you then the camera gets the or the captures the light which is reflected by the earth to the moon and from the moon back so you can see this kind of photograph but for that you don't need a greater magnification instead you need a long exposure time mm -hmm. so it, it is the inverse relation because like, if if we don't need a, a good magnification for this can we do this uh, from our mobile phone too like yeah definitely you can do this from our mobile phones okay because uh, it is it has a inverse relation higher the magnification lesser you have to keep your uh, exposure time okay mm -hmm. so uh, like exposure time is basically what a shutter is open for yeah so when when you click a photo like a random photograph of your friend then or the auto mode the, the shutter speed is, is around 1 by 4000 seconds so it is a 4000th part of a second very fast yeah but as you increase the magnification you have to lesser or lower down your exposure time so you for this the exposure time was maybe around uh, 30 seconds so the shutter was open for 30 seconds so for that you need lesser magnification and hence it was captured just by using the camera and no telescope was involved in, in it so this is the <clears throat> partial solar eclipse i think on june 21st 2020 Similarly, uh, I was uh, the similar to the disc which uh, I shown in the earlier slide. This was also captured using camera and the badder solar field because uh, no such greater magnification was required. The main motive of the eclipse is to uh, just get the view of eclipse, and this was sufficient because uh, you can clearly see that the sun is visible in a crescent phase, which is not possible. So it is an eclipse. So that was the only motive behind it and hence I used my camera, no telescope was involved. This is a lunar eclipse. I don't uh, exactly remember the date but I think it was in somewhere in 2018. So it is, yes, obviously super blue blood moon eclipse. And same, it was also captured uh, using the 700D camera and the 250mm lens. Okay, so this is the conjunction. So when conjunction is basically what when two astronomical objects uh, share same right ascension. So basically you need to know what is right ascension. I, I hope uh, there are certain concepts uh, right ascension and declination. Yeah. 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 Of so when two celestial objects share a common right ascension, mm -hmm. then they are said to be in conjunction. Okay. And yeah. uh, so moon and Mars uh, conjunction happened in somewhere in 2019. So for that you need you don't need the detailed view or the zoomed view of the moon itself. You need both of them in your frame. Okay. So the magnification is required, and hence the setup will be uh, Canon camera and lens. So no telescope has to be involved in this particular photographs. So it de it completely depends on what object you are photographing or what event you are photographing. For eclipses. 
so to summarize i can say for eclipses conjunctions ecl- and certain such earth sign and such things you basically don't need a telescope you can do this with the help of dslr and whatever you can do with the help of dslr you can do with your mobile camera so these things you can practically do with your mobile cameras the um, clarity may differ of course but uh, to start with you can definitely try to get better into it just by using your mobile phone you don't need any telescope or any particular software also these images are very raw or very at a very crucial stage so you don't practically need post processing as well mm-hmm. so no software or no technicalities are involved as such you just need uh, to a ds a basic dslr or a mobile phone camera to capture such images great as we go for okay so comet photography and for comets uh, the telescopes and dslrs both are required it again depends on what type you are doing so there are certain bright comets which are visible to the naked eye so in early 1970s there was halley there was hale bob and so on you might have heard those comets yeah. but yeah correct but recently we had a comet called as neowise neowise correct so it was a naked eye object and of course when it is a naked eye object you don't need telescope you can directly photograph it with your camera so i'll just i uh, yes i have photographed it with my canon 700d so i'll just share a photograph of it okay so and one one more point if you want to photograph the core of the comet so basically comet has a core which has the icy or rocky part and then there is a tail behind it yeah if you composition of a comet yeah mm-hmm. so if you need to photograph just the core then you need higher magnification and for that you definitely require telescopes correct but correct. if you want to get the entire picture of the comet along with its core and the tail then you practically need only camera and no telescope has to be involved in it okay so i of course as an amateur photographer uh, i I'm not sure if an astrophotographer or my motive was only to get a beautiful image of the comet because uh, Neowise was nothing to do with some uh, further astronomy into it. So the motive was not to get the core and everything. So I just use my Canon DSLR camera, and uh, so this is my this is the photograph. You can see the greenish core and the tail behind it. so this is how a uh, comet comet neowise was captured uh, basically you need for the detailed view you need to stack the images so what is stacking is you need to capture multiple frames of the single photograph mm-hmm. so if so I, for example i am clicking a photograph right now so you have to click multiple such photographs and using the software you have to stack like they are the software attach attaches one and one on another image so like if you capture 100 same frames then it piles up 100 such frames for better clarity so that is called as stacking okay so for cometary for comets photography or some detailed planetary photography you basically need stacking and hence uh, the stacking was done by me with the help of deep sky stacker and auto stacker to get the quality image along with the good details of the comet so if you get uh, if you capture a single frame then the the tail was not visible or sometimes it happens that uh, the core is not properly visible or the tail gets uh, like uh, faded away in your background or the light pollution or anything so you need to stack the images for the better clarity so i would like just like to share uh, my experience uh while clicking this particular photograph so it was somewhere around july 2020 this uh comet was visible to the naked eye but uh, unfortunately it is the monsoon season in india so it was a bit difficult for us to spot it with the help of naked eye so uh this comet was uh, so me and my team went to photograph the comet and the sky was totally cloudy for 10 days so we have to practically wait for 12 days to get that this image but 
on the 12th day itself like when this image was captured at that point also the comet was not visible to the naked eye so we have we had to search for its position using the uh, softwares so we used stellarium the the question which you uh, asked that what are the prerequisites or what knowledge you need so here are the such situations where the knowledge helps you to capture the images because if uh, not visible to the naked eye then what you have to do is know its position and the position is shown with respect to certain stars mm -hmm. so this this comet the co position of this comet was somewhere in the northeast uh, northwestern sky uh, around the constellation auriga i think yeah around auriga so in the sky map or in the stellarium software what we were shown is the position of the comet is near to a particular star in auriga so for that i first need to know where the constellation auriga is in the sky then spot that star which is visible to the naked eye <clears throat> and then get the approximate uh, right ascension declination of the comet right ascension declination of the star mm -hmm. so if you so if the data is for example i don't know the exact coordinates right now i'm just giving an example so let's say the declination of the star is 10 degree okay and the declination of the comet is 12 degree that means they are 2 degree apart from each other yeah so once i spot the star i know that i have to shift 2 degrees away from it to get the comet okay. so that's how it is calculated because the comet is not visible to the naked eye so okay. basically what uh, i or what we had to do is spot that star then just drift the camera 2 degree away and take a random dark image of the sky and then in that camera when the lens is open for a wide time or long period of time of course long exposure mm -hmm. then we spotted this comet in our one of our frames and this is how the the photograph was taken so wow. here some prerequisites uh, or some basic knowledge is required for astrophotography but for moon and planets and conjunctions of course you don't need any prior knowledge or any knowledge of the software what you need is just enthusiasm so you can go out and try with your cam mobile cameras as well yeah enthusiasm and patience yeah patience a lot of patience of course yeah. so uh, so let's shift to the interesting part which is planetary imaging so planetary imaging is basically photographing the planets and planets are very far away from us so it definitely needs telescopes so that setup for planetary imaging is that i use my 90 mm cassegrain 4 inch cassegrain telescope mm -hmm. then i piece is attached to it then you get an adapter which is uh, used to connect your i piece to your dslr camera so it is called as t adapter and and a ring called as t ring okay okay you can just uh, if you anyone is interested you can just write it down t adapter and t ring you can just google it for your model like i use canon camera so canon has different tiering nikon has different tiering sony has different tiering it depends on the models which you use but uh, it is very easily available available in the market and it's uh, cheaper like it's not that costly it's uh, say 500 or something like that i not so it's not uh like the costly as the equipment so you can definitely get one on amazon or any of your uh, electronics dealers but you just need to make sure that you are using the same tiering for the same model the like canon tiering has to be used for canon the nikon tiering has to be used for nikon <clears throat> but it is easily available so this is the basic setup of planetary imaging Uh, the planetary imaging is the process of capturing the planets exactly so mercury phases of venus ice caps on mars and such <clears throat> interesting things great red spot on jupiter saturn along with its rings and other things can be captured so there are two methods of imaging with the help of camera so if you remember the prime focus and the eyepiece projection which uh, we talked about in the previous slide yeah. so i will just uh, help you with the help of diagram so this is the prime focus so consider this as the telescope tube 
तो दिस इज द टेलीस्कोप ट्यूब एंड इफ यू सी दैट देर इज नो प्रैक्टिकली आई पीस अटैच टू इट इट इज जस्ट द डायरेक्ट ट्यूब ऑफ द टेलीस्कोप विथ नो आई पीस दिस इज द टी एडप्टर विच आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू देन दिस इज द टी रिंग सो दिस इज द टी एडप्टर टी रिंग एंड द कैमेरा सो कैमेरा गेट्स अटैच टू द टी रिंग T ring at gets attached to the T adapter and T adapter is directly attached to the telescope's main tube. So this is called as prime focus imaging. And the second one is eyepiece projection. So you can, if you can see, the uh, telescope tube ends at this particular part. Then this extended part is the eyepiece. If you can see the small lens over here, so it is the eyepiece. And then the same technique gets you the T adapter, the T ring, and the camera. So there are. basically two things but is uh, prime focus and the second one is uh, eyepiece projection so for planetary imaging i suggest uh, you need a lot of magnification so it is better to have eyepiece projection method only so uh, i'll just share you certain things so, which uh, whatever i told you is the it's written here prime focus method is generally used when magni medium magnification is required not that high or not that low and if you need a good magnification or higher magnification uh, you need to use the eyepiece projection method so for details or the surface details of the or the rings of the saturn or for surface details of jupiter like there are gas gases bands on jupiter so if you need to capture such certain things in detail you need to use the eyepiece projection method and the prime focus is not sufficient but to try with you can definitely go with uh, uh, prime focus method as well so planetary imaging is done in multiple ways so as i told you earlier that the deep sky photography or the comet or planetary or the lunar or solar photography you need to stack the images that is you, have, you need to capture certain frames and stack one of each one of them over each other but for planetary imaging that is not sufficient you need to capture a small video of a comet so you know you don't need to take a frame okay you take a short let's let's say 30 seconds video of a comet with the same setup like uh, the eyepiece projection setup and the instead of shifting it to the your camera to the uh, imaging mode you have to shift it to the video graphing mode and you have to take a short clip of say 30 seconds picker yeah so same it is written you can capture it a 30 to 40 second video of the targeted planet and then it is processed in the software so i've uh, shown i will show you uh, as it is so if you can see this is a short video of the planet uh, uh, is it uh, visible to you the was the video visible yeah yeah video is visible the movements were there yeah, okay okay so uh, you can just check it that it is the planet is moving across the field of view then the, the, so this is the jupiter footage so it is a short 30 second video of jupiter but you can definitely see that it was not clear it was uh, moving across the field of view but that's fine you need pip that's where the pip software comes into picture you need to stabilize your targeted planet at one place right mm -hmm. it was moving across so you need to center your object and fix it at one place so for that a software called as pip a free software uh, it is used then uh, you get something like that here you can see that jupiter is Uh, very much stabilized it is at least in the center of the frame still it is wobbling but uh, it is still in the center of the frame and not moving across the field of view so uh, this is uh, after processing in pip and this is the end one you can see the clarity then the two bands are also clearly visible so this is the final outcome of what the entire process so this was captured by me with my 4 inch telescope uh, with the eyepiece my canon camera with the eyepiece projection method so pip makes it uh, the your targeted planet get fixed at one place it centers your object 
then this then still it was wobbling so you need to stack those things to stop the wobble so it it is done with the help of auto stacker and registax so these two are also free softwares you can just uh, if you if anyone wants you can just note it down so it is registax and uh, auto stacker and then uh, after the final output of registax you can use photoshop or gimp or any uh, post processing software and after that processing you can definitely see that how clear the image of jupiter is visible so the later part this is the end result of the jupiter similar uh, so jupiter finally so this is similar for saturn so if you can clearly see the first one is saturn footage then the saturn with pip it was centered and this is the final if you can see the saturn rings are beautifully visible in that image yeah yeah so uh, planetary imaging is and it is a very interesting process correct the results are also great as you definitely uh, if you use 8 inch telescope it is even better if you use 12 inch it is even better but a basic telescope which is a 4 inch telescope can give you such uh, great and amazing or astonishing results in the first image you can clearly see those two bands of gases on jupiter and the saturn you can clearly differentiate the center body of the planet and the rings you can also see the gap in between them then uh, you can see uh, so the this one is uh, planet mars it was captured by me in october 2020 when there was a opposition of the planet so you can see the red planet over here then the crescent to venus so if you can see uh, venus has also phases like the phases of the moon so this crescent to venus which was captured in 2021 by me and the last is planet mercury planet mercury has no specific surface uh, details so it is not uh, visible in, uh, like it its photograph is not that clear or something astonishing but you can definitely get uh, by the way this was captured by me at prime focus so if you use ip projection method you will definitely get a better view but uh, it has no practically surface details so i tried to uh, do some experiment so i wanted to try uh, like prime focus method for it and hence i used that anyway just a minute Okay, so this is the uh, photograph of the all the solar system objects captured by me in a single frame. So Mercury, the Sun, the Sun disk which I shown in the first slide, yeah. Sun and the Moon were shown in the first slide. Then uh, Mercury and Crescent Venus, then Mars which I shown just now, then Jupiter and its moons. So the four moons of Jupiter, which is Europa, Io, Callisto, and Ganymede. the four galilean moons are the biggest moons of jupiter are clearly visible through your telescope and also you can photograph them so this is how it was photographed and the saturn of course so all these photographs are captured by me uh, with a 4 inch like minimum grade equipment so you can get some astonishing results with astrophotography as well and with minimum required minimum equipments just you need some patience and uh, some enthusiasm basically you need to try some different things with different uh, softwares with different processing because uh, each uh, image or each time you process you get a different result yeah so there is no practical ending to it you can process it we also do things like we get the raw data we keep it and the raw data raw data is again and again processed by different uh, for people and you get different results and each time you experiment you get something astonishing so you have to keep the patience and try processing as much as you can beautiful so yeah so all the these objects were individually captured and compiled in the solar system photograph let's uh, just shift to wide angle photography So wide angle photography refers to capturing Milky Way, star trails and the constellations. Milky Way and the constellation cover larger part of the sky. 
and hence in order to cover the entire part you need wide angle lenses obviously right milky way or all the constellations they are spread over the sky they are not a point source in the sky yeah true so that you need a longer field of view mm-hmm. and long so it is again the inverse relation higher the field of view lesser the magnification Correct. so for such uh, photography you practically the telescope is useless you don't need to use the telescope you whatever you need is a wide angle lens which is a 60 nm mm 18 mm or 50 mm lens also these things you can also do with your mobile phone you don't need any higher equipment dslr is of course or always a better option but you can also do it with the help of near mobile phone and a tripod okay so just uh, understand what it is so higher exposure time is required and hence uh, the second reason why wide angle lenses are required so just now we discussed that uh, higher the exposure time lesser the magnification again this is the inversely inversely related to each other so you need to use the wide angle lenses which which, which means lesser magnification for the wide angle photography so maximum exposure time which can be used before stars trail depends on the focal length and it is inversely proportional so which we discussed right now that the star visible is visi- gets visible like a line if you uh, go beyond a certain limit mm-hmm. so uh, there are multiple methods to know the highest exposure time but the famous one famous method is the 500 rule so it is 500 upon focal length okay so if your focal length is say 20 20 mm lens if or for uh, ease let's say you are using a 50 mm lens so what will be the maximum exposure time so it will definitely be 10 seconds because 500 upon 50 okay okay so yeah so you should not go beyond 10 seconds if you click a 12 second photograph then your star will be not will not be visible like a spot instead they will be visible like a line fine so that is called a star trailing so like every time Uh, we have to use this uh, 500 by whatever your focal correct so there are multiple rules there are three to four rules but uh, the one which is famous or basic or sufficient is the 500 rule okay so every time you need to check the 500 rule mm-hmm. uh, with the required focal length so if i'm using a 16 or 18 mm i definitely get up to 27 seconds and so on yeah. so it is the best Uh, thing to use lesser magnification lenses but just make sure to uh, use the rule 500 rule and set your exposure time accordingly okay so milky way uh, for milky way you need the basic requirement is dark locations because uh, for a planetary photography and lunar and solar photography light, light pollution is uh, fine i mean light pollution is never welcomed in astrophotography but uh, in a way we can say that still we can manage planetary photography in a light pollution but for deep sky photography especially milky way you need very very darker locations so uh, i'll just uh, suggest bottle scale that is something called as a bottle scale so it measures the light pollution of the sky okay so so lesser the bottle level uh, lesser the pollution so for like one bottle level one bottle level two and three the skies are best and the city skies are like 7 8 so there is a site website called as light pollution map you can visit it after our webinar mm-hmm. www.lightpollutionmap.com and you can practically scroll to entire a um, world map is given on that website you can select any location by like typing the name for example mumbai nashik everything and so on or you can just give the coordinates like the latitude longitude coordinates or you can practically drag and see any location on anywhere of the earth and you will get the bottle scale of that location okay so the bottle scale has to be 1 2 or like 3 for milky way but uh, after 3 it's really very difficult to spot the milky way 
so that it's that is the main requirement for deep sky photography uh, let's just let's okay so as, I, as as we discussed you should know the rise and set times of milky way which uh, rohan also gave an interesting examples of some softwares and how they can be used to know when the milky way rises and it sets so the best one is stellarium it is a freeware you can download it and you can just check at what time at what location your milky way will rise at your place so most famous part of the milky way so milky way is a galaxy and there are different parts to it called as arms so there is a cygnus arm there is a sagittarius carinae arm and so on so the most famous or the most brightest brightest one we can say or easily to easy to spot we can say is the sagittarius arm uh, so the Sag sagittarius arm has to be in the constellation sagittarius right yeah where the name is so firstly you need to know when the sagittarius constellation rises Fine. so you can just check uh, on on the various apps which you use when the sagittarius constellation rises then uh, spare some time because when it is closer to the horizon it gets uh, uh, like faded in the haze or the light pollution so wait for the sufficient time when it reaches highest in the sky or to say it uh, it reaches the meridian the proper technical word mm -hmm. uh, like to explain it in a simpler way wait it to get sufficient higher in the sky don't just photograph it closer to the horizon uh, so definitely when sagittarius is uh, in the sky the sagittarius arm has to be in the sky that's why why the name is called the sagittarius arm of the milky way correct so you can just check it so in india summer season is the best season to view and photograph the milky way so uh, the photograph which I, which i captured was from lay and it was in uh, on 10th april so as i told from india april and may are the best seasons to view milky way as it is visible in the sky for almost 6 to 7 hours it rises at 11 pm in the east and sets uh, nearly at the sunrise so it's the best time to photograph the milky way from india mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, and definitely if Milky Way is not visible to the naked eye, we can see the bright stars of Scorpius and Sagittarius. So we also discussed this during the comet thing that you need to first uh, spot the star and then go for it. Yeah. But if you're uh, viewing from darker locations, you can directly practically see the Milky Way. It is also visible from uh, various places in Maharashtra as well. You just need to uh, go to darker locations. But the view which I got from Leh was amazing. I just shared the, that photograph with you. Yeah. And uh, multi yes again uh, the the stacking thing long it's ex multiple exposures or multiple frames needs to be taken, and they need to be stacked together to get the details of the Milky Way galaxy. So yeah, Milky Way is the favorite target of many astrophotographers definitely. So yeah, so this is the Milky Way galaxy which I captured from Lee. Beautiful. You can definitely see. So this is the galactic center. If you can see, it it appears uh, egg shaped, like somewhat like egg shaped. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, galactic center, and this is in the constellation Sagittarius. So or Dhanuras, if you know the the like uh, Indian name so and that's why it is called the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way so let's uh, proceed further uh, so this is the star trails so as I told you that if you don't uh, follow the 500 rule then what happens is this star trails okay so stars appear like a line but that is also a branch of astrophotography astrophotograph like if you are photographing something else then follow that 500 rule but if you want to photograph the star trails only then you need to do it in a specific way so let's this and also i have captured it from pangong lake in lay the star trails so i'll show that photograph to you and how to photograph it we'll discuss it shortly 
so we can take a picture of motion of the stars in the sky so it, all of us know that the stars revolve around the pole star correct yeah. so when pole star is at the center the stars appear to revolve around it in a circular way mm-hmm. so we can practically capture that motion of the stars so so it is practically the motion of the earth but like relatively so to say we can say that it is motion of the stars around the pole star okay so uh, yeah so this requires uh, i'll just skip the same part which is it is a wide angle lens and required that is the basic thing so of course again 16 and 18 mm lens and this time the you can just check the number of exposure so it is 20 to 30 seconds or even it can go up to 2 to 3 minutes mm-hmm. so practically uh, the photograph which i took or and it has to be registered uh, stacked in a software called as star stacks okay so, so uh, if anyone wants to note down uh, just uh, star trails cannot be stacked in other softwares which we have discussed so far it has to be stacked in at either auto stacker or star stacks but i would suggest to uh, use star stacks as it is very user friendly you just need to upload the images and all the work is done by the software you don't practically need to um, like do much uh, stuff over there so i would suggest star stacks uh yeah we can take the field of view and everything so it is a quite uh, example so uh sky rotates 1 degree every 4 minutes or completes a rotation around itself in 24 hours correct so 360 degree in 24 hours means which means 1 degree every 4 minutes okay. so approximately if you had need to uh, if your field of view like your frame is uh, is consisting of 90 degrees of the sky so for that you need 90 into 4 360 minutes yeah It's approximately five to six hours. Yeah. So it uh, it is a time-consuming process, but the result is uh, definitely yeah okay. So that's the results. So I captured. Uh, so this is definitely not a five-hour thing. Uh, I did it for two, three hours, two and a half hours. So I took a two-minute exposure. So the shutter was open for two minutes continuous, and I took. 75 to 80 such photographs mm-hmm. and stack them at a uh, pangong lake in uh, star stacks so this is what the result is so you can clearly see that the pole star is in the center and it has not trailed but the uh, all the other stars are appear to appearing to revolve around the pole star so this is how it is done and this also verifies the rotation of the earth so to say correct so yes uh so uh let's uh, quickly go to the constellation photography so certain constellations capture our attention so definitely uh scorpius orion ursa major these are some famous constellations it also requires uh, wide angle lenses because as we discussed it is a long part of the sky which needs to be taken into one single frame and 10 to 20 seconds exposure time So this is the Ursa Major. So you can check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they are called as Subtarshi and so on. Ursa Major. So this is the Ursa Major constellation. This is the Scorpius constellation. Okay. So one interesting photograph over the is this. This is the Orion constellation with the greater field of view. So you can also see the Orion Nebula over here. This is the Orion Nebula and this is the Orion's belt. and this was done uh, with without telescope so you can try just do this such things uh, with your mobile phones as well so mobile phones and dslrs so such basic uh, equipments give you certain astonishing results so this is one of them uh, like orion belt with orion nebula then deep sky astrophotography refers uh, capturing objects beyond our solar system so which are clusters nebulae galaxies and so on and it definitely requires zoom because they are very very far away from us certain 
objects are like three thousands of light years away from us. So we all know what a light year is and how far those distances are. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. So you definitely need zoom lenses or telescopes. So uh, and stars track tracker is advisable because you in this particular thing you need both. You need uh, zoom lenses as well as the higher exposures. Okay. Like so you need to use a star tracker where what the tracker does it rotates your telescope as per the speed of the earth yeah. and hence it doesn't trail and you get the stars as fixed objects itself uh, so a basic tracker is also available uh, in your nearby shops and the basic one is uh, around 9000 rupees like Just nowadays we get trackers with uh, inbuilt in the telescopes like you know we have miade and all those correct 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 have uh, trackers. yeah so i'm uh, the one which i told you is for cameras okay. it is not for them okay. because uh, we get we get uh, heq5 mounts and everything so they are basically what they are mount uh, with tracker mm -hmm. like we practically use heq5 mount which is one of the top uh, used mounts right now for okay. astrophotography so 8 inch Orion, 8 inch telescope, reflector telescope, and the HEQ5 mount. So it is uh, inbuilt tracker. It has inbuilt tracker. But if you want to take one uh, separately, you can check it uh, on online as well as nearby shops. And the approximate amount is 9000 rupees. So, and such exposures can be stacked in Deep Sky Stacker or Serial and processed in GIMP or Photoshop. So I practically use Deep Sky Stacker and GIMP. Because Photoshop is a paid uh, software, you can if anyone has it, you can use it. But uh, you get the same results using a free software. Then why go for it? So uh, use GIMP and Deep Sky Stacker for it. So this is one of the Deep Sky, the most famous Orion Nebula, which our team has captured with the help of same uh, HEQ5 8-inch reflector telescope and HEQ5 mount. So the, which so this was the same object so this photograph is with the help of a camera still uh, of course the telescope uh, thing is very much clear and astonishing but still you can see that uh, the just dslr is also very very close to it so that's just dslr the phone cameras can also do wonders so this is the same photograph, uh, I mean same object for uh, and our team has captured it and certain objects like uh, star clusters. So it is a globular cluster in NGC 1851 in I think Columbus constellation. So this was also captured by Akash Mitra team in, uh, in this February, February 2022. I was a main part of that team for capturing this particular all the images uh, then, then you can see the m83 galaxy it is a spiral galaxy of course the shape itself is telling you so there are different types of galaxies so this one is the spiral galaxy it uh, appears like a like you know what is spiral binding is right so it, it are arms up like a spire that spiral binding thing so it is called a spiral galaxy so these are the astonishing results which you get. Okay, so let's go for mobile photography. We can even capture the beauty of the sky with our smartphones. However, only brighter objects can be captured. So that is definitely you cannot capture very faint and very far away objects. Okay. But to start with, you can definitely go for it. Uh, you the requirement is manual mode in camera. As I said, the one which you directly use is auto mode which is not uh, required, you, what you require is manual mode. So manual mode and a sturdy tripod. Because uh, if you don't use a tripod, then when you click the button or the or when you click the shutter, you get a shake and that shake is uh, disturbs your image. So what you practically need is a sturdy tripod. And we can even capture the solar system objects using mobile by attaching the mobile to the telescope. So there is an adapter for it. So it somewhat looks like this. 
where this is part is the telescope this is the adapter and you can attach phone and yes you can get the view of moon as shown in this picture or any planet and everything so it is also available on online on amazon flipkart also your nearby stores i'm um, not sure about its price but it's uh, cheaper uh, it's not that expensive you can just check it and use it because it, this is the best thing to start with uh, uh just smartphone uh, adapter and a tripod so this is the basic requirement and i think you can definitely use it to start with and then you can definitely upgrade so this is the same star trails thing captured with the mobile phone and that's why i purposely uh, included that image in our presentation so you can see that uh, the trails are clearly visible in a uh, like semi circular way so yeah it is captured by one of my friend in our uh, photography session so th this is how a mobile camera can also do wonders you can definitely go for mobile astrophotography as well software used the last part of our presentation so as we just talked about it throughout the webinar that stellarium sky safari photoshop game and so on there are many many more softwares but what i would suggest keeping into mind the pointers like ease of using then user friendly how user friendly the software is is it free or costly what results it gives so certain basic things keeping in mind because uh, each telescope serves different purpose so it's better to use uh, all the equipments you have so uh, it's a 90 mm resegren telescope okay uh, i'm okay to... so uh, and uh, to answer rohan's question uh, uh, first of all i would like to thank rohan for giving me opportunity to speak and present this beautiful topic in front of you all also i wish best all the best to his uh, new venture which is astro lab uh and suggestion for audience is uh, just one thing it's like uh, this is amazing and it's a very vast field so just keep your enthusiasm try certain new things uh and try to achieve something greater like uh, it may not be the best image till the date but try to achieve something uh, try to upgrade your images try to process them again and again and the most important thing is keep patience and keep trying uh, thank you once again rohan and astrolab for giving me this opportunity uh, we, we in fact we should thank you uh, arjun you are not uh, audible rohan um hello okay just a minute hello hello am i hello hello hello, 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 hello. 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 Yes, you are. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Um, what I was saying. What yeah, I was saying. Yeah, we should thank you actually uh, for, uh, for such a wonderful session. And uh, like, not, like, not we, only I, because you know, <laughs> because, you know Astrolab is uh, currently in its initial state uh, stage, and uh, and now you know I am a bit. I was a bit caught up in uh, in few works, but now now I am. Uh, I got some time out of it. and uh, i'm really planning a few things ahead and um, i also invite the audience present over here to you know um, those who have selected yes uh, to receive an update uh, i'm 
uh, I am planning to make a group, a WhatsApp group, or maybe I will send you an email when we will, you know, uh, start a process of maybe I will not see it as a hiring, but just uh, to include you into Astrolab, uh, into Astrolab formal team, so that you know we can have the reach to people, and then uh, through that reach, then we can uh, even you know upgrade this platform, and uh, we can provide more opportunities to uh, to people. And uh, Archit, I really, really invite you, and I really want you to you know get involved into this because uh, I from the from the bottom, bottom of, my heart, of my heart I really love this uh, this session by you and uh, an audience what are your your views you can just write into uh, into the chat box of course I will say uh, I will share the feedback form to you all too but uh, how was it I would like to be a part of Astrolab also I would like to just uh, mention to the audience that if you want to get connected with me for astro photography or anything uh, you can just visit my Instagram page, uh, the handle I've uh, mentioned it in the chat box and you can just uh, uh, go through my all the images which I have captured of the celestial objects and you can just uh, connect to me if you want. Thank you. Yeah. And Rohan, I would love to be a part of Astrolab. Yeah, yeah. Um, Achit, uh, Achit uh, I'm just sharing the screen, okay, because uh, I just wanted to show uh, audience how they can, uh, like two things basically. Sure. Uh, I've stopped my presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, great. Is the screen visible? Uh, yes. Uh, just uh, switch to the tab. Yeah. It's yeah. visible. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so, okay, so audience, audience uh, this is the website Astrolab, and um, and, when we'll and when we'll start including the people, we will uh, the first target of us will be to uh, will be to the people who had already you know bought a free plan. So when you reach the website, this is the home uh, home page. You can just uh, go to the plans and pricing, and uh, this is a you know free plan. Actually, uh, I don't need to make it, but still you know just to keep that those records. So you uh, so you can just you know click on uh, get now and um, and you know here you can just you know sign up login uh, so that you you will be added to our uh, to our record list and uh, there uh, we will just approach uh, to your email and we will send you the details or the form which you need to fill up and um, and we'll have a meet uh, some uh, sometimes in future like in coming future very near and uh, then uh, I will share that plan because I first need to make what we have to do and then I am going to reach the people uh, yeah and the uh, second, thing, second was thing was how you can, how get, you can the get the recording of this session. Uh, um, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah it is recording. So how you can, so how get, you can the get the recording of the session? You will just go to more and, and then the flashback. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I guess I am logged out of it. Uh, but yeah, as you will, you know, go into the flashback, you just have to log in anyways, uh, or I will just, you know, make the changes and make it, uh, you know, available for all. So into the flashback, you can go, or else you can, you may, uh, yeah, so from that, you may, uh, you can, you will enter into our uh, YouTube channel, um, and then you will have the video of, uh, of this particular uh, lecture. So, you know, those are the two important things uh, you will uh, have to keep in mind to connect to the Astro Lab. And also, you, and also you may go to the LinkedIn page there, uh, the page of Astrolab is there, follow it or you can just you know go to my page, Rohan Gurte is the name, you can just type it out and you'll find my picture over there. So you can just uh, you know connect with me, you, 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 can, you may connect with Archit Gokhale and, um, and yeah I would really um, like you all to, uh, to be the part of the former team of Astrolab and, uh, and Archit I invite you uh, from the bottom of my heart to be a part too. Definitely. Yeah. So audience, so audience and Archit, I, I am really glad to have you here today. And uh, for now, we can just uh, we can just finish our meet and uh, and let's get to test our uh, phones cameras right away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending the, the webinar and thanks Rohan once again. Welcome. Welcome Archit. and thanks to you too and thanks to audience you will be here. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. See you in the next webinar. Bye bye everyone. Bye.